I am Lea Rashovsky. I am a visual artist living and working in Bucharest. I mainly work with drawing and installation, but ceramics has become very important in my work lately. And of course, there's always room for painting, textile and all sorts of other techniques. I tend to view all mediums as exciting and interesting, and I don't feel the need to be contained to a particular one. I tend to view the process as fluid, and I like to allow myself that freedom. I find that mental state to be most prolific. I mostly work with characters, especially faces. It's amazing to me how diverse and different we are from each other. I think this is our main strong point. A human being can be vulnerable and scary and beautiful and amazing all at the same time. And I think when I find the right face, I feel I'm a bit closer to the essence of humankind. So this is what I usually do. I scout for faces and I pick out of the crowd those that speak to me the most. And I try to find myself and others within that particular face. It usually never fails. This is who we are. This is who we are. We are everything all at once. I pair this research of faces and typologies with installations and with contexts that give them meaning or places them in a certain light where you can see clearly um, certain traits or certain things that make them unique. This is why I find my work to be best shown in a multidisciplinary way using many mediums, playing around with things. I think it's an endless journey and I'm not really pressured by where it's going. I'm fully enjoying the process and I think this is the way I'm meant to work as an artist. Just going along and accumulating whatever seems to stick. Knowing this about my process, all I further need is a room where I can just be, surrounded by my objects, my works, by weird little things that inspire me. This is where you'll find some of my best unkept secrets. It holds my drawings and my other works, but also my collections, my books, my ideas, sentimental things from others, you name it. A room where my ideas can manifest, but also a place to just be to stop and think, to write or read. Seems like quite a luxury, especially if you're looking at it from where I'm standing, being without a studio for quite a while now. Since I started out, I probably had seven studios, all short-lived but amazing in their own way. They all had a powerful imprint on what I was doing at the time. This new place gives me a sense of excitement, but also stability that I have been waiting for for some time now. A place where my process can slow down a bit and become more methodical. This is where I am right now and my work cannot be possible without it. I will pick up where I left off, last year in March. That seems like a lifetime ago. The thing is, it was not a seamless passing of time. So much has happened that I feel my hands tingling with electric current, craving that moment when I will put them back to work. This thing I am working on, flowers growing out of my chest, has been stuck on my mind ever since. This project about being in a trance-like state to the sound of your own body working on autopilot, doing its biological thing.
creatures are deep in rhythm. More will soon follow, and also some ceramic objects that will speak about the same thing. I have yet to make them, but I think I already mapped out every detail. This is the thing with having too much time. I'm always open to surprises, of course, it's a main part of my process. Having a pretty clear idea is where I start off, and then I have it turned upside down by some powerful will of the material or something other, something random and magical that guides me better than I ever could. This project is a continuation of my ongoing exploration of my favorite subject matter, humankind and its complexities, its rawness, its beauty, and the faces that tell stories. This particular project goes a bit further into that, into that particular place where we are not only human, but also, in some aspects, an untamed beast that resonates by instinct and is led by a very primal urge to take in vibration and to understand the world through other means. The global pandemic hit quite hard. A few days before lockdown, last year in March, I lost my studio and I had to pack up everything and move it to a storage. Then I had to be at home for what seems now like an endless time. I couldn't work, I had to be away from everything I started, so, you know, I just had to rethink everything over, think everything again, in a different way. I had a lot of time for detail, a lot of time for planning, a lot of time to write about things, something I didn't have before. So now, when I'm returning to this new space, I feel like I have accumulated so much that it's bursting out of me and I cannot wait to put it into action. After the longest time spent without a studio, I find myself in an empty room, well, almost empty. Everything is packed up in a corner, you can't really see it in this video, but it's waiting to take its place. It's a huge mess of all my former places, bits of old projects, sentimental objects, things wrapped up for ages. It's quite a privilege to start fresh in this space that is vital to my work. I painted it white clean the windows and the floors, to sustain the illusion that I'm the first one here ever, at least for a second longer. This particular place has a history that is many times my age. It has lived many lives, dark and complicated ones, and now it lives one that I'm creating here, one day at a time. Hopefully a positive and radiant one, even if it is a grain of sand in comparison to everything that has happened here before me. I look forward to turning this place into my own, slowly, to get to know it as you would a new person in your life, to see it change with the seasons and moments in the day, to find sweet spots in it just like cats do when they settle into a new home. <laughs> 